Chapter 10, Learning Objective 3. Record and Disclose Cash Dividends. Both creditors and shareholders are interested in the amount of assets that can be distributed as dividends. The paid-in share capital is not available for distribution as dividends. This restriction helps protect creditors by preventing shareholders from withdrawing assets as dividends to the point where remaining assets become insufficient to pay creditors. For example, assume total assets are $40,000, total liabilities $39,000, and total equity is $1,000, consisting of $900 in common shares and $100 of retained earnings. The maximum dividends that could be declared in this situation is $100, the balance in retained earnings. Let's now look more closely at cash dividends, starting with dividend policy. Sometimes the board of directors may choose not to declare any dividends. There may be financial conditions in the corporation that make the payment impractical. There are four main considerations when it comes to cash dividends. First, there may not be adequate cash on hand to pay dividends. This is not an uncommon situation as corporations regularly reinvest their earnings and assets in order to make more profits. In this way, growth occurs and reliance on creditor financing can be minimized. As a result, there may not be enough cash on hand to declare and pay a cash dividend. A second consideration is that a policy of the corporation may preclude dividend payments. Some corporations pay no dividends, but, instead, reinvest their earnings in the business. This type of dividend policy is often found in growth-oriented corporations. A third consideration is that there is no legal requirement that dividends must be paid. The board of directors may simply decide that no dividends should be paid. If shareholders are dissatisfied with that decision, they can vote to elect a new board of directors or sell their shares. The last consideration is that dividends may be issued in shares of the corporation rather than in cash. These share dividends may be issued to conserve cash or to increase the number of shares to be traded on the stock market. This does result in an increase in the number of shares and reduction in the value of each share on the market. Now let's discuss the declaration of dividends. Dividends can be paid only if they have been officially declared by the board of directors. The board must pass a formal resolution authorizing the dividend payment. Once declared, notices of the dividend are then published, usually via a news release. Once a dividend declaration has been made public, the dividend becomes a liability and must be paid. Here's an example of a dividend notice for New World Corporation to announce, on May 25, 2024 the declaration of a dividend of 50 cents per share on 3,900 outstanding common shares, to be paid on June 26, 2024, to shareholders of record, on June 7, 2024. There are three dates associated with a dividend. First is the date of declaration where dividends are usually declared, in the New World example, the date of declaration is May 25, 2024. The second key date is the date of record. This is the date when the shareholders that will receive the dividends are identified. Any shareholders selling their shares after this date will still receive the dividend. Conversely, any shareholders that purchased shares after this date will not receive the dividend. For New World, the date of record is June 7, 2024. The third key date is the date of payment. This is the date the dividends are paid to the shareholders. For New World, the date of payment is June 26, 2024. Let's now discuss these dates in a bit more detail. The dividend declaration provides an official notice of the dividend. It specifies the amount of the dividend, as well as which shareholders will receive the dividend. The liability for the dividend is recorded in the books of the corporation at its declaration date. The journal entry that would be made in the General Ledger of New World Corporation on May 25, 2024, the date of declaration, includes a debit to an account called Cash Dividends Declared, or just simply Dividends Declared, and a credit to a Dividends Payable Liability Account, both for $1,950 calculated as 3,900 outstanding common shares times the dividend per share of 50 cents. An alternative to debiting a cash dividends declared account, retained earnings, can also be directly debited instead. 
This approach eliminates the need for a closing entry for dividends during the closing process. Shareholders who own shares on the date of record will receive the dividend, even if they have sold the shares before the dividend is actually paid. No journal entry is made in the accounting records for the date of record. On the date of payment, the dividend is paid and recorded with a journal entry that debits the dividend's payable account and credits cash both for $1,950. So far, we've discussed cash dividends relating to common shares. Let's now discuss preferred shareholder dividends. Preferred shares are offered to attract investors who have lower tolerance for risk than do common shareholders. Preferred shareholders usually receive a smaller, but more predictable share of a corporation's profits. Preferred shareholders are also entitled to dividends before any dividends are distributed to common shareholders. Most preferred shares specifically state what number of dividends their holders can expect each year. Preferred share dividends are often paid even if the corporation experiences a net loss in a particular year. Preferred shares may also have other dividend preferences, depending on what rights have been attached to preferred shares at the date of incorporation. One such preference is the accumulation of undeclared dividends from one year to the next. These are referred to as cumulative dividends. Cumulative preferred shares require that any unpaid dividends accumulate from one year to the next and are payable from future earnings when a dividend is eventually declared by a corporation. These accumulated dividends must be paid before any dividends are paid on common shares. The unpaid dividends are called dividends in arrears and are not recorded as a liability on the balance sheet of the company until they have been declared by the board of directors. However, disclosure of dividends in arrears must be made in a note to the financial statements. If a preferred share is non-cumulative, a dividend not declared by the board of directors in any one year is never paid to shareholders.